What's up, sons? It's Blind Dog with Sava Tech once again, and thanks for the warm reception on the previous RX Vega 64 video. I honestly didn't expect it, and a lot of the comments that I did end up getting were some along the lines of what I was expecting. And I figured it was time for a little bit more clarification. Why do I not like this GPU primarily? And like I stated before, it's because it doesn't do what it advertises it, it should be able to do in a very, very basic level. That means hitting 1590 megahertz on the core clock and maintaining that while the GPU is at 100% GPU usage. This card does not do that. Today, we're gonna try to resolve it with some registry hacks known as power play. And we're gonna go through that, but first I'm gonna show you what it's doing now so you get a very clear understanding. And then what we're going to attempt to do is actually set the GPU up to where it performs as advertised, meaning maintaining a 1590 megahertz boost clock at 100% usage while running games. That's the goal here. So if you guys have any ideas of how to do that, let me know in the comment section below. Of course, we might fix it right here, but let's, uh, let's go find out if we can. Let's go do that. What we need to do is just go ahead and open Riva Tuner and MSI Afterburner just so we can get a good in-game showing of what's going on. MSI Afterburner will be open here. In the settings, we're gonna go ahead and hop on over to the monitoring. I wanna make sure that we also have CPU usage in here as well. So you guys can see what's bottlenecking what, and we're just gonna, we got a fresh install of 18.8.1 currently, and this is actually just, if you reset the stock, it says we should be at 1630 megahertz stock on this uh, particular BIOS, which is, I guess, the gaming switched on. And then we have our temp limit at 85, power limit, core voltage, everything's stock here. I'll reset a couple more times so you guys see that. And we are going to go ahead and run Firestrike, which is the benchmark test that I'm essentially trying to improve upon. Now, in my humble opinion, if this card and y'all's cards and everybody's card was performing legitimately at between 22,000 and 23,000 on the Firestrike 1.1 benchmark, the card's not worth $550. However, what I am theorizing here is that Vega does have more performance in it, provided we can figure out how to actually force it to maintain that core clock. Okay, so as you guys can see here in the top left corner, we have all of the things that you would need to see for the GPU performance. As you can see clearly here, we are not CPU bottlenecked. If we are CPU bottlenecked, the CPU would be at 100% and the GPU usage would be significantly below 100%, 99% is close enough there. So now if you look at the number next to the GPU usage, that is our core clock. So when I ask people in comments that say theirs is performing fine, to show me what their actual core clock is, this is what I'm referring to. The advertised boost clock on the RX Strix Vega 64 is 1590 megahertz. We are a entire 100 megahertz below the advertised boost clock. And in my humble opinion, that's not acceptable. So today's goal is going to be trying to actually unlock that performance. So to do this, what we're gonna try to do is adjust the registry to go ahead and tell the Radeon Wattman to go ahead and allow us to up the power limit to 150%. While a lot of people say that they have better and more stable performance with undervolting, underpowering, and underclocking, this is actually probably due to the fact that the GPU is not being allowed to pull enough power at the higher clocks. So we're gonna see if we can kinda at least get to stock performance. The goal here is to get to 1590 megahertz while running a game. So this is actually the best score I've ever gotten in Firestrike on this card, which is uh, 23,020. So I'm actually pretty stoked on that. Glad we got a, a good clip of it. That's the highest score I've gotten so far, and this is purely at stock. So not looking too shabby. What we're gonna do now 
Let's go ahead and make the edits that we need to make. You can head to this overclock.net forum and I will link it in the description below. And huge shout out to all of the people that work on this, especially the person that brings most people's attention to this sort of thing is Buildzoid. He's helped me with a lot of stuff like this and he probably doesn't even know it, but super awesome dude. What we're going to do here is basically, I'm gonna take the RX Vega all-in-one, I think. Well, here's the soft PP pack. That's what we want right here. And I actually modified this earlier on my Mac, <laughs> but we're gonna modify it here now. So I think oh, we already have it, uh, and we already have it right here. So we're gonna modify the AIO version, which actually, uh, we won't have to make any other edits other than the top here. So this particular number, this 32, is equivalent in hexadecimal to 50%. So if we want to unlock and make Wattman think that we want 150%, we need to put it up to 96. I'll show you guys here what we're trying to change. So if we open the Radeon settings here, we head on over to gaming, and then the global settings, global Wattman, accept the license because we just installed this, go to custom and then scroll down. What we want to be able to do is take this power limit slider and go to 150 instead of 50%. Now the card's only gonna draw what it needs, so you shouldn't have to really worry about it. Of course, if we were trying to force it with something like a BIOS modification, that would be a little bit more dangerous, but this isn't near as dangerous. Uh, for that particular reason. So we're just going to set it to 96 so we can unlock that basically as far as it can go. I accidentally just applied the registry edit uh, for this one, but let's edit it and take a look. What you see here, here's the 32 coming down, DC 002C01. So if we come down here, in theory, we wanna put this to 9001, which would in theory, I believe, put us to the portion that we want. Now we need to go into reg edit. So we're just gonna come down here and do a run and then type in reg edit. And I believe, if I recall correctly, we're just gonna go copy this path. So H key, local machine, system, current control set, control, class, and this really annoying 4, 4D36, 4, 4, let's see, 4D36, E968, 968, really? There we go. This one right here. Expanding that out, we'll see this 000. zero, zero. So if this was, for example, and you can always tell by expanding this out, if you had 0000, zero, zero, zero and then 0001 zero, zero, one, uh, and then 0003, zero, zero, you might have additional edits. For the active GPU, you can expand this out and if the volatile settings is here, you're good to go. If it does come out to being 0001, you wanna make sure that you come back to the file and change it to match in the actual registry edit file. And then from here on out, so we've edited, not this one, I think this is the one we wanted to edit, 9001 and 96, and we'll just say save. And then at this point, uh, this is the AIO. I'm gonna double click it and say, yes, I'm sure. And it has basically gone through and made all of the changes that I wanted it to. And then once that's done, I think we just need to do a quick reboot. Okay, so if we open up Tech Power Ups GPU-Z and head over to the Advanced tab, you'll actually see the power limit adjustment range is now not negative 50% to plus 150%, but negative 150% to plus 150%. So we're uh, an additional 100% there. Or our board power limit is 264, and I forgot to check that beforehand. I might want to apply the base one and, and take a look and see what that was, but I'm pretty sure that's quite a bit higher than it was in particular for the card we had. So I'm happy with that. 
ULPS is NA, so I need to make sure that gets turned off actually, which we can actually use MSI Afterburner for that. Pop in here, we should be able to click that disable ULPS and then click OK and reboot to make sure that that gets disabled. Okay, so even in MSI Afterburner here, you can see now the power limit goes up to plus 150 as well. And just for further validation, we're gonna go ahead and hop into the global Wattman and we're gonna scroll down and just drag this up and as you can see our power limit is now 150 as well there. Before we go any further though, we're just gonna go ahead and also give us another bump there and the core clock I'm gonna put, it's putting it at 1750, I'm gonna put it at 1590 which is the advertised, that's what I want. And we'll throw the memory at 1000, because nice round numbers there. That should work, in theory. And if I can maintain 1590 through Fire Strike, then I'm, I'm ecstatic at that point. So let's give this a shot and see what happens. Okay, obviously that didn't work. We actually ended up hurting our performance more than helping it. Curiously enough though, this was set to 1750 right off the bat. So we're gonna come back in here and hit that. I'm wondering what the hell's going on with the way it interprets the boost clock and the overclocks. This might crash, because I think 1700 would be what most people are hitting. By that I mean hitting without crashing, which is not actually what is being interpreted once you're actually playing the game or running a benchmark. You're significantly below that 1700. By how much, I'm not sure. That's a crash! All right, <clears throat> so what I'm gonna try now, let's just uh, revert this to whatever it thinks stock is, which is apparently this. It makes absolutely no sense to me because it has this at 1750 and the temp limit at 70, which is just weird. Let's just say we give it, I don't know, let's just say, throw this to 1630 which I think is like stock stock for this card. And then the 1000 here. Actually, let's leave this at 945 for now, out of curiosity. Nope, 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 nope. God, and that sound is awful. Are the fans even spinning? Look at that voltage though. Dear Lord. Okay, we're gonna try something else real quick. <clears throat> so for those registry edits, we are gonna go back to the desktop or the downloads, let's open the PP file. It's cranking that voltage up like crazy high compared to what it was at. So we're gonna go into this one and edit. We're gonna pop out and throw this to 96. Come down here, change that 2C to 90. File, save, double click that. Edit the registry, reboot. Okay, so this is actually extra interesting. You'll see here that our clock went back down to 1630. So we did make some changes there. I'm gonna leave the core voltage alone. We just want to adjust the power limiter. That's all we wanna adjust here. And then we wanna throw this up, well, to the 1630 and leave it there. And just adjust the power limit and see if that resolves some of the issues. The AIO will obviously not work on this card. But let's take a look at this. We're going up and clock, up and clock, uh, back down. Up and clock, up and clock, back down. Up and clock, up and clock, back down. Previously, it was at about 1700, I think it was. Okay, so as you guys can see, we have not successfully applied this at all. It looks like we are right around the exact same clock rate so i think that at this point we might be having some vrm cooling issues or something like that that we need to look into so i'm going to download the uh, hardware info and get that pulled up and take a look at those temperatures so that gave that dropped us all the way back down to the 22,000 range interestingly enough i think at last time we were like 1750 though I don't even know. I'm gonna do this real quick. The, the other interesting part is that it reports to Firestrike whatever you set your overclock to, not whatever it's actually at. 
So you see here, this was set to 1630, and this is the best run we had so far, which I found super intriguing. I'm gonna grab hardware info. I wonder if I already have it. Hardware info, no. So here's the Vegas 64 on hardware info. And what we wanna be looking for are these VDCC temps. We're gonna pop in here and just reset this to whatever is stock or whatever it believes is stock, which still makes no sense to me. It's running like extremely shitty now at that lower clock, which makes no sense. 68C, 69, 70, we're obviously getting plenty hot. Nothing looks abnormal. It says the GPU hotspot temperature was 64C. Oh, maximum 85C on the hotspot temperature. So I guess in theory it could be throttling off that. But nothing, nothing obvious. Let me do a, uh, this might crash, but out of curiosity, <laughs> crash. Alrighty, so there you go, boys. I pretty much have tried everything I can. We are, it's almost too inconsistent in my humble opinion to know if anything works or doesn't work. I can tell you that Obviously, as you can see with the overclocking and what actually happens in, in the overlay with the core clock are two completely different things. So if you hear somebody saying that they have no problem overclocking the 1700 megahertz, that's probably not true. Uh, and if you actually do go see like validated scores at 1700 megahertz on like Firestrike, for example, you're gonna be looking at 26 to 27,000 in the GPU score which is incredible. As well as you can also see my graphics score or as it was running in Firestrike, we had absolutely no CPU bottleneck for the graphics portions of those tests. So that, that goes out the door. I'm, a, I'm actually disappointed. I was hoping what was gonna happen was I was going to adjust and give us some more power overhead and it was going to resolve it. And obviously that, that's not the case. Now I have used power play for mining in the past and it's helped out there. I don't know, I think the best bet is to, if you do own one, the best bet is to undervolt and underclock and get it stable around that 1450 range, which as best I can tell is gonna be 1700 megahertz and afterburner in Wattman. Uh, and that's like a whole 350 megahertz below it. So it obviously isn't applying right or not getting read right. Uh, as far as I can tell, if you actually get to the 1700 megahertz, like I stated, uh, you just go over to uh, 3D Mark uh, results and do some searches over there. You'll see the it has a lot more potential. Being able to unlock it on this card at least is uh, impossible for me. Maybe it works for you. The only other idea I have is I did see the hotspot on the GPU wherever that sensor is did hit 85 degrees C and the throttle point for the GPU is 85 C. However, I'm not sure if that sensor is the one that usually it's just the core sensor that will cause it to throttle, but that could be throttling it. So I think tomorrow or this weekend, depending on, <laughs> I'm just running out of time, depending on what happens, we will pull the cooler off and check all of the placement of the thermal pads. I'll get on Amazon right now and order some thermal pads and see if we can resolve it that way. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe down below, and I'll see you next Tuesday.